Welcome to Real Life, Real Gospel. I am your host, Josh Laborious, and this podcast is sponsored by St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in Boca Raton, Florida. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time this week, this podcast takes what I hope are real life issues, um, issues that impact regular people on a daily basis, and it applies a Christian mindset to them, a Christian viewpoint of reality. We apply the scriptures to them. And the goal in all this is to see what it looks like to live as a Christian in an effort to keep in touch with reality and well grounded I do my best to minimize the theological language I use the I guess academic philosophical language I use although I will occasionally use some theological terminology if I think it is particularly helpful and in those moments I do try to step out and and define and explain that terminology because the goal of all of this is to be relatable to reality and our topics every week typically come from you the listener and really whatever you send me as long as I can actually make a podcast out of it I am willing to address any topic there's nothing that is off limits and if you have any topic, I would encourage you, submit it. Send me an email, vicar at stpaulboca.com. That's vicar, V-I-C-A-R, at stpaulboca.com. And I'll address it. So with that, moving into our topic for this week, we are discussing physical fitness. Which is, this is the first time in now 17 episodes, but this topic is from me. This is an idea of my own, something I kind of like to talk about because I don't know how often it really does get talked about in in the context of Christianity and religion, and it's physical fitness. Now, this is not going to be a regular occurrence where I submit my own topics, but I had the opportunity to, so I've stepped in with that. And this is a topic that I actually think is really... a a good one to talk about right now it's really appropriate right now because a lot of us have some extra time on our hands as a result of the quarantine and it's important to keep in mind especially now because I think there is a temptation a tendency for us to kind of let it go those of us who had gym memberships gyms are not open anymore um, and All kind of naturally occurring exercise, or not all, but a lot of naturally occurring exercise has stopped because we're stuck at home. So, for those reasons, I think it's important to kind of have this in front of us and actually be conscious of it. But then also, there's this reality that physical fitness can help with our our health, maintaining good health, and also recovery when you get ill... If you are physically fit, you are more likely to make a a good or speedy recovery than if you are not in good physical condition, which is kind of a duh thing, but I think it's worth saying. So that's kind of the topic we're going to get at, and I think it's good that we're getting at it now. And with that, this is Real Fitness, Real Gospel. And the scripture that I want to start off with and kind of ground us in, does come from the Old Testament, as my first passage usually does. And it's Psalm 139. And I'm going to be reading verses 13 through 16. It says, For you have formed my inmost parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. So that is Psalm 139. Some textual notes just to explain where I'm getting this from and maybe some of the context of it. This is taken from within a psalm. 
This is obviously, this is four verses of an entire psalm. And the rest of the psalm is praising God. And it's kind of going through different elements of creation of this world that God has put in front of us and around us. And it's praising him for that. And it's including the human body, the human person as part of that. And part of the glory of God is in his creation. So we as part of his creation are part of what gives glory to God. So what can we take away from this? Well, there's this reality that we are God's creation. Just like the the trees and the earth and the water and the sky and animals and everything else. Like, we're part of creation. So, my, my question for you, my challenge for you is to think about taking care of our bodies in the same way that we, we think about being called to take care of creation, where... We're called to take care of our, our resources and the things around us and be good stewards of that which God has given us. And I don't know why we think about our bodies any differently than that. I mean, and it's clear here God cares about our physical bodies. He designed them. He built them. He knit us together. Um, and at this point, I have a little bit of a tangent for us on this tendency to split body and spirit. And I, I know if you're listening and you're like a philosophy person, there's like a name for it and there's a philosophy for it where all things that are physical are bad, but then all things that are spiritual are good. So we're trying to get more spiritual and less physical. And I'm, I'm aware of that. That's not the language I'm going to use, but there's this tendency in our speech, in our discussions to call the spirit good and the body bad and some of the language that's used around death actually I think reflects this in that we say that you know they've left their body behind they're just kind of a spirit now and that's much better and we split the two and we think that after we die we just kind of become floating spirit ghost things I mean it's a little bit of an exaggeration but Casper the friendly ghost is kind of a crude manifestation of what we think happens when we die but body and spirit are not distinct we're created as one whole person god didn't just find an imperfect vessel and put a a perfect spirit into it no he made us each as people so i think when we talk about the spirit and the body as completely separate no they're they're part of one person We're, we're called to take care of both spirit and body Um, and when, when you get to talk about the new creation, we're talking about giving us new bodies, perfect bodies, just like our, our, our minds and our spirits are being renewed. So that's a little bit of a tangent, but I think there is a tendency to split body and spirit and call body bad and spirit good. And I want to push back against that a little because God created us as, as people, body, mind, spirit, everything all in one and it's all part of what God created us each to be which brings us into this question of stewardship and we are I'm going to limit this conversation to the stewardship of our bodies because if we're just going to talk about stewardship that could be a whole nother podcast in fact that could probably be a couple different podcasts but when it comes to our bodies uh, taking care of them I, I think this A big part of this is preventative maintenance. And I want to compare us to cars. If you have a car, and if you're listening to this and you've never had to take care of a car, I'm going to drop some knowledge on you about cars. There are certain things that you have to do on a regular basis to keep your car running like it should. For example, oil change. You need regular oil changes. You have to get your tires rotated frequently. Uh, There are uh, other fluids, depending on your car, the make and model, that you may have to fill and and top off and replace from time to time. Um, Every once in a while, you have to repair a belt. And these things aren't repairs in that something happened wrong. It's just the passage of time. You, You 
run out or things wear out and you need to update them, you need to make them stronger and and renew them to keep your car running. For example, if you don't change the oil in your car, eventually your engine is going to seize up like a rock. If you don't rotate the tires uh, on some sort of regular basis, they're going to wear out unevenly and I mean, best case scenario, you're just going to have to replace your tires in a weird order. But worst case scenario, it can it can throw off the alignment of your entire vehicle. Um, if you don't take care of the belt before it actually snaps, your car is just going to stop working until you get a brand new belt put in. So, and we understand this when it comes to machines, when it comes to cars especially, we have to take care of them or they'll stop working. And I would say our body is actually very similar. We have to take care of it. We have to kind of preventatively take care of it. Or it's going to stop working. You have to give it the fuel it needs. You have to stretch and and do exercise and keep your heart working and your lungs working. And if, if you take care of this quote-unquote preventative maintenance, what it actually does is it prevents bigger problems down the line. And all of this comes down, this discussion of stewardship of our bodies, we're taking care of our gifts from God. We're, We're doing the right things for them so that they last and so that they hold up and they don't break down. So the application here is that we ought to be taking care of our bodies. And what, what does that look like? Um, I'm going to kind of tailor this toward a lot of the things I've heard and seen about people being in quarantine. Um, And the first is eat the right food, which I actually think is easier right now because as a society, we are eating out less. And I know most restaurants you go to, you can get healthy food. Yes, it is possible. Um, But just the, the sugar and the fat content in in food that comes from restaurants does tend to be higher than food you make yourself. And I'm not advocating a magic diet here, but when it comes to eating the right food, just make sure you're eating fruits and vegetables and lean meats and fish. And there's variety in in your diet. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not an expert at this, but... This advice has been the same for years, for decades. Just eat a variety of foods and avoid the ones that are not good for you. I mean, most of us know what those are. So that's, I guess, uh, a note, not a super specific note, but a note on diet. And then we have exercise. And this is one I'm a little bit more familiar with. I was for... A year, I think it was a year, certified as a personal trainer. I didn't allow that certification to lapse because it cost money to re, I guess, reinstate it, reapply it. And my wife has a degree in exercise science. So this is something I'm a little more familiar with. And you say, well, we don't have gyms. Well, there's something called the outdoors and you can run and it's... I'm presuming almost everywhere because it's it's available here. Exercise outdoors has not been is is not I guess part of the stay at home orders. And every stay at home order I have seen, it makes the exception you can go outside to take walks or to run. So you can still get that cardio in. Grab your bike. Bike around a little bit. Take a jog, take a run, take a walk, whatever is within your wheelhouse what within your physical capabilities get that cardio exercise in and as far as strength yeah you may not have availability of weight training uh, but you can still do body weight you can you can exercise every muscle in your body just using your body you, you have push-ups you have tricep dips you have you can do calf raises you can do squats you can do um, all sorts of you can do Uh, crunches and sit-ups and oblique side-to-sides. I I forget what the exercise is actually called. You can work every muscle in your body just with the space in in your living room. Um, So, 
do that. Make it a part of your habit to just exercise a little bit every day. Um, and then the last health point I have as far as taking care of our bodies, uh, you have eating right, you have exercise on some sort of regular basis, is alcohol. And this is because I've seen a lot of posts about it uh, in regard to the quarantine. Um, don't drink it in excess. I mean, for n- if you need no other reason than drunkenness is... We're commanded to to be above that in the Bible. We are we are told don't don't get drunk. That's when it talks about debauchery. That is what that means. So there is that. But then there's also this very practical side of alcohol is pretty hard on your body, as far as what it does to your organs and things, especially if you drink it in excess. I'm not saying don't drink at all, but don't go crazy with it. And also. F- Fun fact, for those of you who don't know, alcohol has a ton of calories. It is incredibly calorically dense. There's a lot of energy in alcohol. One of the obstacle course races that I that I run, they're called Spartan races. They give you a beer at the end of the race because it is an excellent recovery drink because it has a ton of calories and carbohydrates in it. When you're drinking beer, you're drinking liquid bread is what you're doing. Like it's, it's wheat. So keep that in mind. Like if you have say four beers, five beers, you've probably just drank more calories than you ate with a typical dinner. If you're looking to stay in shape or get in shape over this quarantine, alcohol is probably something you should limit. So those are just some application notes for this. So to, to kind of bring it all together, the reality of this lesson we get from Psalms is that we are challenged and called to take care of our bodies, to glorify God. We are part of God's creation. We are called to take care of that. And now is a great time to practice this. Because if you think about it, what are, what are the excuses people give when they're saying, oh, I can't exercise. I don't have time. You have nothing but time now. Uh, I don't have the space. I don't have the energy. Like, what else are you, what else is occupying your space and energy? Like, if not now, when? When If, if you're not going to take advantage of this time that we've been given now, like, when are you going to have the time or the energy or the, or the freedom to do this, to exercise, to prioritize your health. Um, and that's the rea- that's just the reality of the situation. You may disagree with me, but I, I don't know if there's a whole lot of legitimate room for that. Not to sound arrogant, but it is what it is. And then the, the real gospel that's part of this is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and God does care about our bodies. Which I think is really comforting, especially when we're suffering with illness or injury or something like that. And it's nice to remember that God cares about what happens to our bodies. So um, with that, we are going to drive into the gospel reading that I have for us today that comes from Matthew 6. Starting at verse 19, it says, Do not lay up treasures for yourself on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up treasures for yourself in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? So textual notes on this, this is part of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. It's a series of lessons he put forward before his disciples. And you may say, well, this is kind of a weird passage to talk about physical fitness. But the reason that I'm talking about this is, I, I want to stress this, don't make an idol of the body. Like I'm talking about, it, it is important to take care of your body, to eat the right things, to exercise in appropriate levels. Um... And all these kinds of things. But you can go too far the other direction too. There are people who make idols of their body. And the reality is it it will fade away. Like when we're dead, 
Our, our bodies are eaten by bacteria and worms and other critters if, if you're just buried. And like your, your body fades to dust. That's how decomposition works. So it is one of these, it, it, it's a treasure on earth. And we're called to take care of the, the resources and the treasures that we've been given on earth. But it shouldn't necessarily where, be where our first priority is. And there are people who go overboard with fitness. Who, who spend several hours of every day working out. Who are like completely rigid and when it comes to their diet. And they'll never eat anything that isn't necessarily 100% good for them. And what I want to tell you is it is okay to occasionally eat things that aren't good for you. My wife and I were celebrating something yesterday, so we had some cake. I made some cake. We had some cake. It was it was good. It was slightly overdone, I guess. But that's because I think I, I used a cupcake recipe, and so the middle of the cake took... This is all beside the point. We had cake yesterday, and that's okay. And it's okay. It's good even to take a day off. Uh, or a couple days off a week to to rest to give your body time to recover from whatever exercise you're doing. So what I want to advocate for you is is balance. So it's important to take care of our bodies, yes, but it's it's not an idol. Don't make your body an idol. So that's the first thing I want to take out of this passage from Matthew. But the second thing is this whole conversation about the eye as the lamp of the body. And what I think Jesus is doing here is he's drawing a connection between the mind and the body. He's saying, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Um, and I, th- the connection I, I want to draw here, and I might be going a little bit more expansive on this, is that lack of health can lead to other problems. If you don't take care of your body, it can lead to other problems. For example, financial stewardship. If you're not taking care of your body, eventually you're going to end up with some very expensive doctor bills. Because if if the problems get bad enough, you're going to have to have serious medical intervention. So there there is an element of financial stewardship to this. Like It is cheaper to... Spend maybe a little bit extra to get food that is good for you and to take some time and exercise than it is to spend days or weeks in a hospital because you just let problems get worse and worse. So there's it can lead to financial stewardship. And I think there's also this uh, this reality that exercise can can build up and taking care of your body can build up mental and spiritual disciplines as well. For example, with exercise, it can definitely improve self-discipline. It can be a, a venue, a medium with which to practice your self-discipline. Uh, it can provide a time to unwind, to release aggression that you would otherwise release on people. It can help with your mental health. And just some a couple examples of that from my personal life in case you have never met me in person and never heard me talk about running, I hate running. Like, it is something I actively do not enjoy doing. I am not built to run. That is not what my body type is meant to do. I am not good at it, and I don't enjoy doing things that I'm not good at. So, I, I still run three times a week. And you may ask, well, why do you do that? Well, first of all, it's good for me. And I do need the cardio exercise, but there's also this reality that I am forcing myself to do something I don't want to do on a regular basis, on a regimented basis, and it helps improve my my general self-discipline capabilities. It's practicing self-discipline. And another example is exercise as far as a release for stress or anger. And I'm going to take an example of my undergrad experience. I, at one point, lived in an apartment where my roommates were both dating people. And they would do their, their thing. They would have their girlfriends over and they would, they would just be hanging out. But they'd be watching, like, chick flicks or something. And for a single guy who prefers to use his TV to do things like play Halo and Destiny, um, that was frustrating for me. 
But instead of being mean or rude, at least most of the time, I hope, and allowing that to to harm my relationships, to treat them like I shouldn't, I just went to the gym and I lifted weights. And by the time I was coming home, I felt great. I felt at peace. I felt happy. I was ready to go. So, and if my either of my old roommates are listening to this, um, yes, that is why I spent so much time at the gym. Um, <laughs> kind of kidding, kind of not. Anyway, so I think there's some very practical applications where exercise and taking care of our physical bodies can help with our virtues with our mental and spiritual uh i guess virtues to be a little repetitive so the reality here that i'm trying to draw out from matthew is that there is a connection between our body mind and spirit and how we treat and take care of our bodies can definitely impact our mind and spirit and there's also this reality that our lack of of, a lack of physical health can lead to other problems and they can be farther reaching than just physical problems But the gospel, the good news I have for you here is that this is something we can work with. And a promise to you is the longer you do it, the longer you take care of your body, the easier it actually gets. And I guess the real gospel here is that just like in everything else, when we fall short, God still loves us. And that's awesome. So... Our, our last reading for the day is a pretty quick short one. It's from 1 Corinthians 3, just verse 16 and 17. It says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. This is speaking of the spirit being in us. And in sense of fair play, this text, this letter from Paul is speaking primarily in the context of sexual immorality. But my application here is that we we are God's temple. We are, uh, I guess, a housing for the Holy Spirit. And as such, we are witnesses to God. So we ought to be giving him a good witness. It's the same reason I th- like we take care of our church buildings. We, we devote resources and time to making sure the building looks nice and it's well maintained and it's taken care of. And we do that to kind of give a good witness that we're taking care of the things God has given us. So that is what I want to take from this is that we, we are God's temple. The spirit dwells in us. So we should do our best to be a good witness of that. And One other, I guess, reflection that I have on this is this reality that being physically fit prepares us to do tasks that are put in front of us. So it it can also serve as this preparation for whatever missions God has in front of us to to be ready to take on those missions, even if they might be physically demanding for whatever reason. So um, that is my application of this verse and kind of in closing what I want to do is I want to just give some some very simple exercise and food recommendations based on my expertise, uh, as limited or extensive as it might be. So my exercise recommendation for you fundamentally is this. Do something. Walk, run, do body weight exercises, get your step count in for those of you who have either a fitness tracker or your phone has a step counter. Make the effort to get your step count in on a daily basis. Like, go make a conscious effort to exercise every day, especially in situations where you might be sitting at home all day and you're not getting kind of that natural exercise just worked into your day. So that's as simple as my exercise recommendation is for you in this time when we don't have gyms to go to and when we're in quarantine. It's just make the conscious effort and do something. Now, my food recommendations for you are, I guess, a little more complicated or I guess at least a little more demanding. Don't eat things you didn't make. Whether that be junk food or whatever. So this this would encourage you to eat things like veggies and fruit and lean meat and fish. And if you want to make a snack, make the snack yourself. 
And that's kind of the advice I have for you. And obviously, I, I told you before, I have less expertise with the diet thing. Um, but I have talked with dietitians. I've met with dietitians before. And the summary of what they say is keep variety in your diet. Don't eat a whole lot of processed foods if you can avoid it. And eat fruits and veggies and lean meat and fish. But again, I want to reiterate none of this to extremes. Don't spend 12 hours a day exercising. Don't spend 12 hours a day fret, fretting over what you're going to eat. And uh, don't like completely ban things you enjoy eating. Like if you like ice cream, sure, have a little bit of ice cream at night. Like that's that's fine. Just hit, as a treat, not as a part of a major part of your diet. Um so the closing reality I have for us is that God lives in us and we are a reflection of God. Um, and whether or not perceptions based on our physical appearance are accurate, it's something we have to deal with and contend with. So it's something worth keeping in mind as we do our best to reflect the spirit that lives in us. But the gospel, the joy here that I want to close on is that the spirit dwells in us. We, we are God's people. And that is regardless of how nice we keep the quote-unquote house. The Spirit still dwells in us. God is still with us. God loves us and forgives us, and He always will. So, brothers and sisters, this has been episode 17 of Real Life, Real Gospel, Real Real Fitness, Real Gospel. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me, whether that be in the comments or via email. Again, that email is vicar at stpaulboca.com, V-I-C-A-R at stpaulboca.com, S-T-P-A-U-L-B-O-C-A.com. And... If you are, if you, this, especially if this is your first time, but maybe this is, you've listened to a couple podcasts. If this is something that has been helpful to you, um, give us a like, subscribe to whether, if, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe in the, in the lower right hand corner of the, the viewing screen right underneath that. There's a subscribe button. Go ahead and click subscribe. If you are watching us on Spotify or, or listening to us on Spotify or Podbean or Apple Podcasts or iTunes, go ahead and subscribe and let us know that it's helpful so we can kind of be encouraged in that way. So with that, I've been Josh Laborious, your host, and I hope to talk to you next week. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.